uh, for global BB relations. Uh, I tried to get a little bit of everybody on the panel, so some men, some women, and people from all around the world. So Phil is actually representing Africa on this right now. That's right. So Phil is EOS Nairobi. <laughs> um, no, so I tried to get, so we've got Oceania, we've got Asia, we've got, uh, so I guess, Europe, and then uh, we've got Africa, we've got America. I tried to get South America, but I couldn't. Um, and then I guess I don't know where you guys are because you guys are Europe. Uh, yeah, so I tried to get a little bit of everybody up here to talk about global BP relations and about the community uh, because a big part of this, a big part of EOS, uh, I often say that one of the greatest assets of EOS is the community. The technology is awesome, uh, but without community behind it, nobody's using the technology. So I'll start off with maybe if everybody could shortly introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Adriana Mendez, and I am the community manager for Cypherglass, and we are a BP in the U.S. Thanks. My name is Jess Holgrave. Uh, I'm a founder of the um, block producer, standby block producer, Shios. Um, we are uh, 10 female founders, and we're distributed around the world. Hi, I'm Phil Mesnier. I'm with OCI. Um, but today I'm representing EOS Nairobi. Uh, Daniel Komotho could not make it because of visa restrictions. So, yeah. Thanks. Uh, my name is Paco. Uh, I represent uh, EOS Mediterranean. We're based in Madrid, but we are a totally decentralized uh, node with people in China, Africa, and the United States. My name is Jafong. I'm from EOS Asia. Uh, we have members from all over the world as well. Hi, I'm Ross Dold from uh, Eosphere. We based in Perth, Australia, but uh, our team's also become quite decentralized now. We've got representation in London and Finland. Excellent. So a big part of it is that, and I kind of led into it before, uh, talking about blockchain, the technology behind it, and without technology behind it, we wouldn't have blockchain. I think everybody agrees with that. The first question is, um, without community, would we also have blockchain? Is it very similar? Or, or, or is community as important or of, of importance enough to blockchain? Um, I think that they work together. So the short answer is no. Um, I think that it takes community to have blockchain technology because it's based on decentralization, which requires community action. So my, my answer is no. So no, they're not the same. No, they're or no, it's not as important. Or what's the no, no. to? <laughs> no, they wouldn't. Ex I don't think blockchain technology would exist with without community. Um, you know, I've been on the road now for about ten weeks, visiting different communities all over the world, just to learn more about community and blockchain technology working together or not working together. And I think one thing that I've found is um, even where blockchain technology isn't. Um, there's kind of uh, the idea and notion of decentralized communities. So I don't think you need um, you know, blockchain to have decentralization and communities, and you don't need communities uh, to have blockchain. I think that they feed off of one another, and we're just at a unique point in time and history where they are starting to combine together. I mean, I think m from my perspective, sure, you can have a blockchain in the absence of community, but what makes a blockchain strong and interesting and as dynamic as the EOS ecosystem is its community. Um, so the blockchain might exist, but I think what's really unique about this community is its strength and that um, there's a symbiosis there between the strength of the network and the strength of the community that's supporting it. What do you think is particularly strong about this community? Because you mentioned the strength of this particular community. For me, I think it's... Um, the majority of people that I speak to <coughs> in EOS, more so than anywhere else, there's this idea that this isn't necessarily a zero-sum game, that there is space for everybody to do everything, there is space for people to support each other and work with each other, but at the same time all succeed. Um, and I think in, in other ecosystems, um, there is more of an element of kind of fighting and, and less willing to um, kind of collaborate and work together, and I think Examples like when we see the hackathon, the amazing work where everybody is, even if they're competing with each other or they might be um, you know, working on similar projects, there is this real sense that by working together we can help this, this ecosystem grow. And I think that's what leads to the, the w like rapid development in EOS that I think is faster than, than other things that are happening right now. 
Yeah, you kind of threw me a curveball by going off your uh, sequence. Just just so you know, uh, I've been in communication with Daniel, and he sent me answers, so I'm I'm not coming up with these things on, off the top of my head. But I apologize no, for no, that. No, 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 no. Uh, it's kind of what I'm, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm tr being true to my uh, colleagues. So there in, in Africa, the uh, community is very important, and uh, what Daniel says is they're looking for a very serious need to re-architect tools of wealth creation and you know being able to disperse that so that you don't have such a wide gap um, he's he says that you know the technology of blockchain is one one way to to create money and capital supply from the ground up and something entire the entire community is waiting for so there you go In the case of um, of uh, EOS being a governed chain, ob obviously community is of the most importance. Um, but there is a lot of cryptocurrencies who have no community, so there is not a need. In the case of EOS, yes. So um, I think community is so important because um, a blockchain without community, uh, with just the technology part, it's called distributed systems. We have that. 20, 30 years ago. Um, but what makes um, blockchain so special is exactly because of the symbiotic uh, energy and also the chemistry that it creates uh, among the people with the, te with the foundation driven by the technology. So I think it's, it's so important. And coming from a tech person angle, it's very fascinating for me to see because this piece of software, this piece of technology, we have seen it before 30 years ago with distributed systems. But that didn't have the effect, that didn't have this impact that we can create. And I think uh, community is just so fundamental to it. So this is when you get to the end of the line and I can just sort yeah, of recap we, we what everybody said. Or we don't really need to go, actually I'm not a favor, I'm not a fan of that. So you can pass the mic around and do whatever uh, for the next questions, but now you're stuck here at all the right, end. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, okay. sorry. We'll let you go first next time. <laughs> right. Well, in, in my opinion, uh, you, you don't need community for blockchain. It's just a technology. However, if you want a successful uh, blockchain and a general purpose blockchain in the case of ESIO, um, you need community in order to um, get that adoption going. I mean, if it's, if it's not adopted, if people aren't building the dApps on the platform, it's not going to go anywhere. Mm. Yeah. So good lead up then. You, you can start with the next question. So as Eosphere, how are you engaging your community worldwide? And you kind of touched upon it when you said you're now, and I think th this touches a lot of VPs in the room, um, the teams are growing and you're starting to, uh, to have staff all around the world and we're starting to break down language barriers that, that perhaps uh, existed and still exist. So how is, how is Eosphere engaging their community worldwide and what challenges are you encountering now in this kind of global world that, that you're building in this? Well, we started obviously in February, those that remember us from way back when on EOS Go announcing our candidacy. And back then it was definitely a calling all pockets. However, we did want to make sure we captured the Australian market in particular, well, the Australian token holders and, you know, pushed the adoption of EOS, which has definitely been very, very much more on the uh, Ethereum solidity side of things. Um, it involved starting off with that, starting up with meetups, but then we quickly realized that all the token holders are around the rest of the world rather than all in Australia. So we started to grow our community reach, which obviously started off with all the social media. So Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and that kind of thing. And then um, I think we really started to get some uh, connections or um, understanding of other countries and other uh, block producer candidates. When, when I met Defung for the first time, it was at was at the yeah. Hong Kong, yeah, at the Hong Kong, Hong Kong um, Block One meetup. And from there, it just sort of snowballed. We started to meet new BPs, uh, new people announced their candidacy. We started be making friends on Telegram, lots and lots of social media, everybody helping each other out with videos and promoting each other's strengths, etc. cetera. And um, I suppose one of the, the most challenging things is it's just because, I mean, it's, it's definitely a seven day a week thing, right? It's, there's no five day work week, but because it's global, now it's 24 hours, right? So, you know, I think, you know, you're waking up in the morning and having, you know, 500 
telegrams that you should probably actually read. Do right? we sleep? <laughs> Do we sleep? Yeah. So I think I think that's part of the challenge, right? But yeah, now that um, now that uh, something that we certainly changed is Eosphere is we started to bring on community team members. I know that you did that with your ambassador program, but when we started bringing on people just straight up from the community, it really made it easy for us to ensure that we had that kind of connection. So for EOS Asia, and I think first of all, uh, EOS is the project, the, the most global project that I've personally involved with. And it is it is amazing to see you know a room of people from everywhere, and so having a a, a more global reach uh, for for NEPP I think it's very important. For, so for us we have Chinese and uh, and, and and international community, um, and for me personally uh, and as, as well as a lot of the founders of EOS Asia, uh, we have personal experience inside and outside of China. So I grew up in China, but I uh, left China when I was 12 years old and spent most of my um, um, life after that um, outside of China and then recently got back to China So, um, and my co-founder as well. So we have a very unique perspective and understanding of uh, inside and outside of China, which is, I think uh, um, China is a, a huge component of, of the EOS ecosystem. So having that perspective helps us to uh, talk to people from both sides of the world, mm. and I think uh, I think that is you know, one of our core strength as US Asia founders. Um, in terms of some some of the challenges, I, th I think uh, um, the cultural differences, as well as language difference, as well as time zone difference, is very challenging mm. uh, for a lot of the communication. Sometimes when you have you know when you want to get an answer from somebody, they're asleep, and you. You kind of just think about what, why are they not answering? But the fact is, they're just sleeping, right? Um, and I know there are teams in uh, there are teams that, uh, that are based in Asia, Asia shifted their time zone to fit more with uh, the American time zone. So Lao Mao's team, he, every single day, they woke up at 12 and go to sleep at like 4 a.m. So uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there are there are there are teams that's you know making that effort to oh. uh, to adopt the challenge, and but I think the challenge is still there. And so, uh, for me personally, I want to um, you know bridge that gap, um, try to um, make people understand there are all these differences, and there the differences is, is innate. It's not like intentional, um, and 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 I want people to understand that more. Can you touch a little bit about that in terms of perspective between so having grown in China and then having lived overseas and, and worked overseas and grown overseas as, as, a, as a person, can you touch a little bit about those differences and different perspectives and, and how it applies to, to EOS in our community? Um, I think a lot of it is in the details. It's really hard for me to, um, 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 to talk about you know, in a general sense. Um, I think maybe... Uh, more specific case will be better, um, but I felt like uh, a lot of times we as human, it's better to do it face to face. When you see the smile, when you see the expression, when you see it, that it's a it's a human being that you're talking to, um, it it resolves a lot of the potential conflicts. So you know, meetings like this. Uh, meetings like meetings, the the the, inter the the global meetings that we had before, I think that was very uh, crucial for um, resolving potential conflicts and understand that the next time when you talk to somebody on Telegram, it is that person that you talked to before face to face, and 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 that that for me I think has a huge impact, um, and I recommend Chinese or, or non Chinese VPs to go to events more often to show people who you are. Uh, and not just you know avatar on telegram <laughs> yeah we we are um as i explained before a totally uh, different team we have people from china we have uh, uh, people living in the states and part of our team is in africa also so aside the time difference i do believe the cultural differences are actually something beautiful uh, is what makes us what we are so i don't have a problem with that um, there is a point where uh, it, 
it can become the lack of understanding can become inefficient. So you got to be careful in in sending your message across in a way that the person doesn't lock himself because of the cultural difference. In th in the case of China, one example, my my partner, the head of technology in in Aos Mediterranean, are Chinese, and I'm a person that I'm well traveled, but I never had an experience with with uh, working experience with Chinese, and it took me a while to understand that. Um, the way I was saying things uh, to them, it was considered actually invasive. And so, you know, you got you got to be very honest in your communication, and you got to be very aware that what you think is polite or impolite, maybe for the other person, is the complete opposite. So it's good to have that that in mind. That's that human element to the yeah. blockchain, right? So I think it was it was said in in the previous panel. Um, governed blockchain has many different definitions um, and I think that just being part of this room is is very different than other projects where is that human element that's added to it right mm -hmm. so for EOS Nairobi how do they engage with with the communities and their communities around the world so Nairobi is really interested has has a lot of they're, they're building connections uh, within their community and, and globally um, Daniel reports that they uh, are well. They're they're preparing a, a another EOS summit at the end of this month, and I guess it's going to be in Africa or somewhere. He didn't say, and I don't know. Um, but he he said they've been approached by the United Nations to uh, help organize an EOS uh, hackathon, uh, a global a global hackathon to. Um, research or to, to seek solutions for um, challenges resulting from climate change. So he's asking that everyone can, who's interested to participate in helping, helping save the planet. Um, he has, I'm sorry? Yes, absolutely. So he also cites as, as their biggest challenge is the reason why I'm on this stage today is travel restrictions that the Africans have difficult times getting visas to come to other countries and so you know, he hopes that in the future more meetups happen in countries or locales that are more amenable to travel from uh, for for their for people you know with with easier visa restrictions so yeah you know, it's kind of ironic that that was one of the things that the San Francisco hackathon was cited as a uh, challenge not to do was something that involved multiple countries and passports and as a smart contract for the hackathon but I think that's a perfect challenge for us here is a way to make it easier for people to interact and get together So I think Shios, we started in a very decentralized way. We were 10 founders, and we don't have specific roles at the company. We all do a, a numerous different things. And um, so we've really kind of, from the very beginning, taken this approach of, of being a very distributed, decentralized team. And um, fortunately, over, um, over that period, we've had people who just really believe <coughs> in what we do. Um, many of them are, are women as well. Many of them aren't, and but want to become Shios ambassadors. So um, this week we announced the CyberCode twins. We're going to join the team as members, and so we've just slowly been building up people who um, really share in what we believe in, um, and that's also our biggest challenge: is communicating what we believe in. Mm. Um, I think particularly at the outset. Um, we had a lot of criticism that we just don't like men, <laughs> which um, I have to say we, that's not ca not the case. Um, we just believe that um, we really want more women in the space too, and so communicating what Shios is all about and what we stand for has probably been our biggest challenge in helping the community to understand that um, what we're not trying to do is replace men with women, <laughs> but just try to make uh, this ecosystem more accessible. Um, because if we added as many women in this room as there are men, um, think about how much how much more we would be doing. Mm. Yeah. 
have, have you learned anything? I, we'll get to you after. Have you learned anything about that in terms of how can we encourage more people to participate in this, especially women? I think it's, uh, you know, women is one thing, but it, it's more general than that. I think sometimes there can be this perception that the blockchain space is all about technology. And the reality is that now we are growing to the stage where we're building applications that are touching real world solutions. Um, and we need everybody. We need people from PR and marketing, and we need artists and creatives and musicians. And we need all of that diversity to make sure that we are building a technology that really serves everybody and that isn't inheriting um, biases because it's built by a very homogenous group of people. And the best way to do that is to make, uh, make this accessible, um, is to kind of translate from the technical jargon that is needed to operate, but make sure that other people can understand it and um, make sure that it is, uh, it is accessible. Um, it is to make sure that there are role models for people um, who might perceive this space as being inaccessible. Um, so, you know, making sure that there are female um, mentors at hackathons, making sure that there is visibility for people, um, because that's what makes people want to, to go into a space and makes feel people feel comfortable, um, is when they don't feel like they're, uh, they're alone there. So um, when I first joined Cypherglass as the community manager, uh, my first thought was, how am I going to manage a global community? Um, it seems like a really daunting challenge. And um, I remember being on the you know go, no-go calls and it feeling like a mini UN. And you had all these people with um, different languages and different perspectives and different cultures coming together and arguing and fighting and debating and trying to add value where they thought it was valuable. And one thing I realized very quickly was that there were just so many different perspectives um, you know, on how EOS should be used, what it really is, what it really means. And uh, you know, I went to Rob and I said, you know, I really think the best way to understand this community better and how to grow it is for me to hit the road. So um, right before the EOS hackathon in London, I decided to go on the Cypherglass Road Tour. I've now been on the road for 10 weeks to, uh, visiting different communities, some that have well-established uh, EOS communities, some that have absolutely no blockchain communities at all, just to gauge the difference between the two. Um, and I've found a spectrum of perspective and a spectrum of reasons for EOS to exist. And um, you know, going from, from the hackathon where everybody came together specifically for EOS to traveling to Costa Rica to visit EOS Costa Rica and their EOS surf program, um, learning what they wanted to use uh, EOS for in, in their local governance, going all the way out to Thailand, where there's very little uh, blockchain presence, and uh, understanding that uh, a community like that can really has a lot to gain from EOS. Um, you know, I think that right now I'm still learning a lot about what this community needs to grow. I think that you know we're only six months into this amazing project. And it's all about nuance and perspective. You know, EOS has this human, um, this human interaction factor that, that no other blockchain really has. And I think that that's a unique opportunity for us to bridge a lot of gaps between communities and cultures that normally don't work together and, uh, and bring them closer. And you know, one thing that everyone in the crypto space talks about is uh, you know, institutional investors, institutional investors. But what we're forgetting is to burn the candle at both ends and make sure that the grass uh, grassroots community is being fed too. And uh, I think as a block producer, it's very, very important for us to not just communicate it in our own native language, but to be communicating with languages and cultures that differ from ours to better understand how to grow the community. So hitting the road for me was the, the best way to do it, just dedicating my time to learning about different cultures and communities on, you know, in person was the best way I knew how to, to get in touch with the global community. And I guess there is a global community of, of not only token holders, but people all around the world that are seeing the benefits of right. blockchain or the potential benefits of blockchain. Um, but we, we also kind of forget that this is a community. So the people here were also kind of a micro community within the larger community. Um, and we find ourselves globetrotting quite a bit, like you mentioned. So you just, you're, you're, you're on a 10 week span and you're not done after this. Um, so 
blog producers are traveling all around the world and we're attending these events, what kinds of things would we like or w what kinds of things do you want to see more of or less of when we do these events? Because it, it can get taxing and tiring at some point. So in order for these to be more efficient, what would you like to see? Um, com community member interaction. I think that sponsoring community members with good ideas that don't maybe have the means to attend these things and bringing them in is very important. You know, a lot of people in this room have been involved with EOS since the beginning. So what we're not seeing is, uh, you know, the new user's perspective. And that can bring a lot of innovation and perspective into the space, and I think we're desperately missing that. I would also like to see, um, you know, insight committees formed around different, different um you know, core subjects like finance or, you know, legal, uh, international law. I think that having insight committees can really bring a lot of knowledge into the space and, and into events like this. I think we're going a bit You don't the need way to keep going <laughs> this way. You can just pick it up if you want. Um, I'll just say really quickly, I think um, uh, I love so much that we are traveling the world. I hope everybody is also carbon offsetting <laughs> their flights too. Um, as well as their BP production going forward, thanks to EOS Authority. Um, for me, I think it's you know it's great to, that we're having these discussions, but I think um, w one of the things that I would love to see is a um, kind of hackathon style approach where you know we are really um, you know maybe put into random teams and sort of problem solving um, actively um, rather than necessarily just discussing things. So I'd love to do something like that if anyone wants to help. <laughs> okay, me. All right. Um, we break the chain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We just forked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love all of our, our get-togethers around the world. Um, I love the, the panels and I love meeting with what I regard you as all my friends and colleagues. It's, it's excellent. Um, I've developed a, a real enthusiasm for having these unconferences. Mm. It started off with the one that we did in Korea. I thought that was excellent, <laughs> right? Look, I know it didn't involve um, the rest of the community, but I think after that unconference, we got to know each other face-to-face uh, -face more than a, in an informal setting, not just at like an event. I thought that was excellent. Yeah, it, it was good. And we, and we solved some, well, we, at least we agreed to disagree or agreed on a, a way to go forward, right? To, to, to a degree, right? <laughs> um, I would like us to do more stuff with dApps. I know that there are, there's like an EOS World Tour and they talk about, and they invite dApps and, uh, you know, you see there's the hackathon, um, which is cool to just arrive and, you know, come up with a cool idea. But I like the idea of maybe doing something where us as uh, BPs could uh, do more to promote uh, the, the dApps that are actually being created. I know that we've got some uh, excellent relationships that we all um, build with uh, with these guys that are actually creating stuff for our platform, and uh, yeah, something something a little bit more something a little bit more inclusive of that. I have nothing to add. It's all good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the on the only thing probably to add is what Phil said and and Daniel that we should um, really look that uh, next events are in places where everybody can come. Uh, try to f pick up countries that are friendly with uh, with the visa situation. That if it was coming from me, I would eliminate all visas from all over the world. I see another an impediment that that, that that don't really understand, never did. Right. So Daniel reported that he would like to see more working groups. That when you come together as an organization like this, as a as a big group, that you have smaller teams like what you were saying. Maybe not hackathon style, but just smaller focused groups focusing on particular challenges that are, are affecting the community. So that's that's their view. Awesome. So switching up gears a little bit, um, in terms of teachable moments. So I mean, we've been at this now. Most most teams um, have been at this now for I don't know eight nine months, depending whatever. More than that, a year, a year and a half uh, for some teams. So what have been teachable moments in terms of what you've learned um, from, from the past, you know, from the past little while doing this? And what can you share in terms of lessons learned? I'm gonna start here. Um, I think I have two things that I wanna share um, that I learned um, for the past 
ever since mainland was launched. Actually, even before then. One thing is, uh, I have found that um, I believe DApps are going to be the future of how people know about EOS, and and I had that ex experience because uh, we were in the process. Of, we we built um, EOS Pixel, and then we launched it with the uh, community team uh, involvement, and we we have met people who get to use EOS because they want to paint pixels on the canvas. And that was, I, I knew that this would happen, but you know, seeing it happening, um, 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 it's still a totally different feeling. So, and so that's one sharing I want to have. So the second sharing I want to have is, um, it's still really hard to use EOS for new users. I think in the room we ha we have got to use EOS so well that all the ideas, how to create account, you know, CPU, net, RAM, we 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 know how it works, but for a a new user, totally foreign to the idea of EOS and maybe totally foreign to the idea of blockchain, and he just wanted to paint some pixels, just wanted to paint on the canvas, and then he has to spend thirty minutes, maybe get a friend to create account for him. Uh, I think this is one of the. I think this is still the biggest problem that we have, and staying in the community for too long, uh, lose that perspective, that new user perspective, and 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 I, I constantly I want to remind myself like, how do we make this experience a lot easier? What you know? What is what is the experience coming in from a new user angle? Because um, I believe to make EOS ecosystem great we need a lot more new users uh, and we need them to don't really care about un uh, understand that it's running on EOS but just use the dApps and so how do we make that experience great and it's something that uh, I constantly uh, you know reminds myself about um, I think uh, retrospectively lessons learned what I took took away from launching EOS, starting off our campaign back at the beginning of the year. I think I didn't realize the the importance of social media marketing yourself. I always knew that we had had to rely on the uh, token holder support because you know we were going you know fund back into the ecosystem and you know develop a, a following. But I think yeah, really, if anybody was starting out, I would say just make sure that you understand that this is a twenty four seven thing that you need to continuously campaign in order to keep yourself up there. Um, especially if you don't have any kind of institutional support or big token holders, uh, you know, you rely on your community, which means you, you need to ensure that they know what you're doing. And that's what I've noticed of, of late, where as soon as we br brought in people from the community to work as part of our team, how we suddenly got um, a lot more penetration and it actually made my life a lot easier. I come from a professional services um, background where, and when we first started Eosphere, I was trying to run it as a business. Um, I wasn't actually thinking on the side of community involvement and, you know, let it grow organically. But I, I've learned that that's what you actually need to do. You know, you can't uh, be checking up on everybody's idea and questioning them. You know, sometimes it just takes passion and, and, and enthusiasm and that's what, that's what you need in order to grow. <laughs> That's a paid I, I, I actually, I actually think that um, that is um, the learning process that I've uh, gone through in, in EOS, and I knew, understood cryptocurrencies before, and I understood governance, and I understood so many things that actually um, have nothing to do with what I'm learning here, and it's every day. Um, is is um, you know in in every Telegram group there is always uh, politically, economically, uh, technically, there is always something new coming up, a new idea, something new, and um, it's one of the things that I'm enjoying the most is is the level of uh, of uh, very bright people that I'm finding in EOS. So, um, Nairobi. They're interested. Wh what they see is the uh, the big takeaway is the rate of change with EOS and the evolution is causing people to have to f 
focus their ideas and get things out the door much more quickly. So basically, you can't have so much noise. You have to really focus on what you're doing because if you wait too long, if you wait a minute, your idea is going to be stale and obsolete. So, and uh, for myself, what I saw was, you know, like what Defang was saying is there's still it's a very complicated system to in, to to deploy and operate and I think there's a lot to a lot of opportunities for developers out there to build tools to make it much easier for to to lower the lower the barrier of entry now I think there's challenges on in terms of deployment in terms of running the system and and you know what Daniel was saying about the speed of rate of change of ideas there's also technical rates of change I know a lot of you guys are dealing with having to add more hardware much more quickly than what anyone boy when when we were first developing this we didn't have any idea that it would be so fast you know basically the the thought was that Moore's law would allow us to keep up but we're seeing the rates of change of consumption of resources now exceeding Moore's law by probably a order of magnitude so yeah you know I think keeping up with the change and making it easier th those are the important lessons um, I think for me Micro four. <laughs> I think for me the the learning curve has been um, I don't come from the technical side I come from you know community and, and marketing side so learning um, you know learning how to navigate the technical world of, of EOS has been a very steep challenge for me personally but um, you know while being on the road understanding that it's just as steep of a learning curve for most people um, you know most of the people that understand EOS to its fullest are either in this room or a part of a very small community so the largest <laughs> challenge I've had is taking that information and relaying it down to the community to understand um, and making sure that, that uh, it's done in a fashion that isn't um, favoring you know, one opinion or another. Being truly unbiased and transparent in that approach has, has been a, a challenge and teachable moment for me because you, you know, as a block producer, um, it, this is a lifestyle. It's not a. It, it's not a job. It really is a lifestyle that we've committed ourselves to. So you learn very quickly that your words have a lot of meaning and that people take them seriously. So you have to choose them very carefully. And um, you know, with with great power comes great responsibility. So it, it's been a, a humbling experience for me, learning that uh, I can't. I can speak my mind, but that I have to choose those words very carefully. I think um, one of the lessons that we've learned at Shios, or, or I think and that the community's learned as a whole, is that um, whilst if you understand EOS very well, um, it might be an obvious choice to build an application on, there are tons of people out there for whom they're so focused on building their DAP and maybe they're already tied into other chains that the switching cost becomes really high. And so EOS is great at competing for people who haven't yet started building, but actually there are a lot of people who are facing challenges on other chains. Um, and so things like the EOS 21 protocol that we just released to help people switch from an ELC 20 over to EOS, um, we think that tools like that are really important, that, um, that there's actually a lot of value that can be um, brought to the ecosystem by people who are in other parts of the blockchain sphere, not just those who are, who are entering first. And so um, that's one of our, our lessons, that we've had a lot of people coming to us to ask how they can make a switch and make a change. Um, and, and so I think that side of things is really important. Um, and the other lesson I think it, for me personally has just been how um, overwhelmingly warm and wonderful this community is. And um, I've traveled to um, Detroit to meet the, meet the community there and, um, and, and a few other places. And it, it's super heartwarming and, and amazing to see how people are collaborating. And, and I hope that that continues for a long time. So for in, order to, for in order for us to keep growing and maturing as a community, what should we do? Where are areas of current concern and, and growing pains that we have? And what kind of barriers do we, are we facing? And how will we overcome those barriers in order to grow as a community? Can you think of anything? F first thing is get that referendum contract ready. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it's out in beta right now. And you can go and use it. I know EOS Authority has 
shameless plug, but Yoast Authority has uh, UI. There's a couple of people. Uh, Yoast Toolkit has uh, UI. So there's a bunch of UIs out there. Go use it. We, we do have another. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, we, need, we need to get it ready and start solving the problems that we have uh, so far with the... Uh, because the, the name Constitution, I, I, I don't like it. I, I've ended up not no liking it at, at all. So the user agreements in that EOS New York came out with, I think, is a much better definition. And I think that that political connotation also, um, colony constitution is probably locking a lot of people, uh, especially in the Asian countries, to understand what we were trying. And I don't think we need anything as complicated as we have right now. So that'd be a, a growing pain or a pain point right now. Anything else? I think we need to, um, as, as a community who's already in EOS, we're oh, moving already, we're already on the train, and um, our knowledge and our, um, our activity is speeding up. And I think it's easy to forget the people who aren't on the train yet, um, and that every time we make an advance or we make a development, we need to go back and we need to translate that for the people who are just entering the ecosystem, because um, we need to kind of keep filling that funnel to make it grow. Mm. Um, there's no point that the ecosystem that already exists just getting better and faster. Um, we need to keep, pre keep bringing more people in. And, um, and for us, it, that's the way that we do that is by encouraging diversity in the space. 100% agree with that. And what we have done so, f uh, I think uh, the community so far, it's still too small um, and, and there's a lot of uh, blockchain people who are, at, you're, they're building stuff on the other chain, they're having problems. And what we've done, uh, especially in China, is we have encouraged a lot of Ethereum developers to develop stuff on uh, EOS. And I think we have successfully converted a ton of them. So they, their, their dApps are running on EOS right now. And I think we need to do more. So if you have like problems, technical problems, um, we, we can always be of assistance. And if you don't understand how things work on EOS, we as a community, we should teach them, we should help them. Uh, like what I said, there's still problems with onboarding new people to it. Um, I think those are the directions that we need to think about as well. How do we lower the barrier for, for developers as well as for new uh, ordinary users of, of EOS? Um, I, I think that to jump right off of that point, I think that that starts at the point of education. You know, and there's many, many VPs that have great education platforms and tools to, to help developers learn what, what EOS can do for them. And I think that's where it starts. Um, you know, hosting more attractive events like hackathons to, to bring people in and, and teach them how to use this um, is, is going to be the key to growing this network. And I think that um, education is something that uh, you can never have too much of. So I would say that we're, we're lacking. I think being six months into this, um, it's, it's time for us to look back at the last six months and refine our processes and, and really understand uh, what terms we're, we're using out within the public, you know, whether we change the word constitution to user agreement, you know, how do we gauge this, um, you know, and speaking with the community directly through tools like the referendum are going to be crucial to understanding um, what these developers truly need to be interested in building on EOS. Mm. So do you think that adoption will come through applications? So it's been mentioned that the amount of users that are in EOS right now is rev relatively similar to the amount of users that were in EOS six months ago uh, in terms of like the people that are using the applications right now had EOS previously. So there's very few people that are new coming into the space. Do you agree with that? And then how are we going to break that barrier? What is going to bring us to that tipping point? Right. I, I do think that we're at somewhat of a, a stall moment. And I think that that comes from uh, a new chain. You know, I think that we are just maybe at a, a break moment in bringing in developers, but really applications will be how we, we introduce this technology to developers and what it can do for them. You know, there's tons of dApps getting usage right now. And I think as a block producer, if you're supporting the dApps, then you're supporting, you know, the ecosystem and, and bringing more people in. But just to go back to education, um, you know, I think a block producer's role is to be providing that kind of education and, and hosting events like this to, to bring, um, you know, local community members in that can therefore take it back to their communities um, and just let it ripple, ripple out. Um, you know, we're, we're six months in. This is a new project and it's going to take time. But what I'm hoping is that now that we've got 
uh, some experience and we've got something to look back on, we can take that and just continue to refine, just kind of run it through the Peloton that it needs to be run through. And hopefully, um, you know, we keep providing them with tools like the, like the, uh, I'm sorry, the ES21. ES21, <laughs> yes. Um, and, and making it easier for people to port over their projects onto ES. And nobody else. Yeah, you want to say something? No. Which question do you want to ask me? Well, <laughs> okay, I can I, I can ask a new question. I guess so about that. So, if you wanted to attract new people and, and you wanted to do it from a from a tech point of view, I think it's pretty easy. Uh, um, we we could talk at length on why Yoss is just simply amazing, um, and how there's nothing that can touch it. Um, but people have heard those arguments, and they're still not porting out over to Yoss. So, how can we as a community attract new people, and how are we as a community different? What do we have to offer? Like, is it, w what can we give in terms of how can we market this for new people from a community perspective, from that human side? So I'd, I'd like to uh, address this. First, I'd like to uh, reinforce my opinion is that this is really going to explode when people don't realize they're using a blockchain. You know, when we say, oh, yes, this is this cool blockchain, we're turning off a lot of people who aren't already part of the crypto community when we say this is a really great app that you can use from anywhere and everything is secure and everything is persistent and maybe then you know whatever whatever the nature of the app is that that'll be the tipping point that'll be when the com when the public at large gets interested in this technology you know when when we reach a point where they have to have this not because it's blockchain but because it solves their particular need in a way that they never knew could be addressed. Well, I don't have anything as profound as that Damn. to say. That was pretty good. Um, in, in my opinion, I, I it was pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> In, in my opinion, it's definitely all about the dApps, um, and the penetration seems to be pen penetration seems to be in the in the game side of things, right? That seems to be what gets picked up mm. really quickly. So um, maybe it's us in ensuring that the developers that are building these cool games are getting the the appropriate amount of support from us, you know, APR nodes, etc. Um, you know, just help them out as much as we can so that they can keep on building and you know, cool games bring bring the users, and that's exactly what we need. Cool games, cool people. Yeah. One thing to add uh, is when we say uh, you know EOS and not the number of users is kind of like at the store you know the, the community, I mean we're we're seeing it with the entire crypto community. It's 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 a bear market. So a lot of people who previously get in didn't understand what's going on. They left during this this period of time. So, uh, but relative to the other crypto projects, I feel like EOS has a lot more vibrance. Um, um, they're actually dApps running, yes. right? They're actually people using those things that um, I, th I find uh, that that's, that's lacking in a lot of other projects. Um, obviously, uh, there, there are a lot more developers to be steal from them, um, and that's what I've been trying to do, <laughs> and that's what uh, EOS 21 is, is about as well. So um, I, think, I think it's, it's, it's just a, a matter of time. Um, it's really hard to rush on something, uh, especially when they do face some of the problems, right? You know, CPUs have issue and there, there are a lot of t uh, users using it. Um, so I think it's a, it, it, it is at this period of time where um, we're at the growth, growth phase of this project. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you push too hard, it might not be so well. We're, we're learning our ways as well. Um, I, 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 have, I have no, I don't feel that um, it is a big problem. I don't feel that at all. It's bear market, and there are dApps running. People are making money. It's 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 good. Um, but I, I feel like we just need to give it more time. Uh, and when the bear market is over, I think everything will be so much better. Awesome. Uh, any questions from the crowd? You guys are a silent bunch. I think everybody wants to go for coffee. All right. Well, thank you very much. Oh, there is a question. Excellent. Uh, I'm Miguel. I'm uh, representing industry, Marathon, oil and gas, and energy. Istris, and I'm new to EOS. That's why I'm here. Uh, Is there any kind of industry involvement around EOS? You mentioned games, okay. But but what are the focus from industry around EOS? It seems like a good platform. 
any problem that needs solving. <laughs> um, I think that you're going to see a lot of um, a lot of projects maybe centered around property rights, maybe things like the mortgage, you know, mortgage industry and title industry. Uh, I've seen a lot of interest that from from DAPs back home. I uh, was on a project called Ubiquity that was part of um, putting putting uh, property rights on a blockchain. And recently, I was in touch with my, you know, one of my old team members, and they were looking at EOS because they feel um, it would be a great chain to, to to put property rights on. So I can answer for uh, Nairobi. One one thing that they they have a few different uh, um, uh, industrial uh, objectives. One is helping the unbanked to have currency and. Um, transaction security. Another is um, fighting governmental corruption to have more accountability for uh, distribution of funds for health and tax, you know, property. Um, and then third is environmental. So these are three very important areas where they're um, focusing their attention. Um, I think this question um, is not specific to EOS but I think to the entire blockchain community, like uh, if, if there's a problem that's, that want to use blockchain to solve, currently EOS is the best platform that you can build. Now, uh, so the question becomes what, you know, um, industries will need uh, uh, blockchain. And I think this is a wider question and there are a lot of discussions on it. But for me, I think any, any, um, any industry that has uh, middlemen in it that um, that you you need to have trust uh, when the trust is established uh, only through a middleman um, and, and you know for example some finance finance systems payments um, um, and and there are a lot of examples of that and recently one of the projects that I've heard that's happening in China was very very interesting um, there's a there's a new district in China. It's called Xiong'an District. We, uh, it is a new district that uh, a lot of the underlying infrastructure is built from day one. Uh, they want the road to be run by artificial <coughs> intelligent cars, so self-driving cars. So what kind of road infrastructure should we build if that's the case? Uh, they also build a lot of their uh, infrastructure uh, on blockchain. So one of the projects that, that's very interesting is uh, if you if you if you if you have like a um, if you're building a building right you have a lot of workers and there are, there are a lot of migrant workers in China um, that move to cities and they they help you to build you know these buildings and to to the 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 the, the, the firm that's doing the construction need to send salaries to these people but the way they do it is they previously they have to send to this you know tiers of people, maybe that is a lead. This lead then distribute the money to the, his tiers of people, and then you know more more, peer, uh, more tiers happen, and people don't know whether the money that they were promised to have actually get received. Maybe the tier took some money because he's the person who's in charge of distributing it. And so uh, one of the one of the project was basically why don't we just you know when we issue salary we issue tokens. Now this token. Uh, is only one way. You receive a token and then you redeem the token into fiat. But the entire process of it is transparent. You, you know that the money that's supposed to be given to this migrant worker, there's no middleman in between. Right? It's guaranteed that this is the money that he will receive. So uh, I think uh, a lot of the, it applies to a lot of industries. Now you need industry experience to, to understand what are the things that you know there's a middleman in between and can be replaced by a peer-to-peer -peer system running on, on blockchain. So uh, I, I, I constantly get inspired by a lot of these uh, projects, uh, but it's it, as, a, as a broad question, I think uh, it's, it's more about the entire cryptocurrency community, the entire blockchain community need to think about. It's not just confined to EOS. But if, if, it is, if it's one problem that can be used, uh, can be solved using blockchain, then EOS is the best platform to build on it right now. Fahid? To kind of, because uh, I, I feel you, you have Ethereum, we have in, in Ethereum, you have consensus that works quite 
tighten tightly with companies to try to solve stuff. EOS is meant to be a corporate, I don't know, uh, corporate blockchain structure. We don't really have that yet. And there's no central authority you can reach out to. But if you want to, you could start a consultants agency and offering EOS, but there's no nothing today. So, because I get the same question a lot. Like I have a big corporate uh, oil, gas, whatever, real estate company. Who do I reach out to? Because it's decentralized, there's, there's no one single party. Mm. Which then means that there's a lot of opportunity for people to come in this space and start offering that service. Yeah, I, I, but at the same time, I will also challenge the consensus model, which is- I like, hate it, but yeah. okay. You know, it's like the go-to place, but then if you look at the, some of the projects that came out, I think it, it's not market-driven enough. I feel like if you if you understand blockchain and you have industry experience, you could go and build a consulting firm. It's like there's a lot of uh, consulting firms or softwares out there. It should be the same for uh, blockchain. Uh, and, and I think there are a lot of people in the room who understand about blockchain and they have specific understanding of certain uh, industries. You, could, you can go ahead and, and provide that type of service. Um, uh, you know, EOS Asia, we do some of that to help with adapt developers. We give them ideas. We, some of them come to us, they don't understand blockchain enough, so we share with them our idea. We help them to uh, incubate their projects. I think, I think that's a good model, and it's, it's market-driven, right? If you don't like EOS Asia's idea, go ahead and, 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 and talk to somebody else, right? Instead of, like, go to the, the firm, um, yeah, but I mean, he said he's gas and oil and from Norwich, which means he's quite probably minted. And he can <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. And that means he just wants to work something that with something that's good enough. Yeah. Just an example. We work, uh, I work for DMGL, so we collaborate with B-Chain in China for logistics and counterfeit products. And uh, in uh, Europe, we work with I IOTA for IoT cases. And if you look at IOTA, they have um, initiatives around, um, you know, with Bosch and the, and the industry in Germany to solve industry cases. So very focused. And in, in China, it's about the logistics chains. So being new to EOS, I was just wondering if you have this kind of industry focus or not. I mean, it seems like you don't have it. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's uh, just curious. So we, we do, um, there's a there's a group in New York that, that is working on, uh, so I don't know if I'm, how NDA it is, but it's a, it's a diamond uh, tracking process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but, uh, but, no, I'm not on NDA with them, but uh, I don't know what I can and can't say. But, but so the, there, there are, there are specific groups. live streamed. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> no, but the, so, uh, and I know that ESF, this ESphere guys don't want to plug themselves right now, but they've just started up a consulting agency. So gra grab, grab him when he gets off the stage and, uh, and talk to them. And I noted that in Canada, there are a couple of projects looking at supply chain management on EOS. Uh, transport industry is looking at EOS and they've already, uh, one of the ideas that stemmed out of the uh, London hackathon, well prior to that, but Eva Co-op uh, is, is a project that looks to, looking to disrupt Uber, but the transport industry within, uh, well, global, but they're starting in Canada, I think they have New York as well, San Francisco. Uh, so there are various industries right now that are looking at EOS because EOS is the first blockchain that can actually do something on it that's a platform. So of course you can have a niche, like what you're mentioning, IOTA, um, and you're mentioning VeChain. Those are niche products, right? It's not a platform itself that then you can build upon. So all the, the build-upons are what, are what the dApps um, that, that will come over time, uh, and they will resolve issues in various industries throughout. We're already seeing that being disrupted. Well, thank you so much.